In September of 2017, many were left perplexed by the baffling disappearance of Jesse Galganoff, a 22-year-old Montreal native whose adventurous spirit led him to the majestic Peruvian Andes on a solo backpacking expedition. What was meant to be an exhilarating voyage of self-discovery turned into a sombre mystery that raised far more questions than answers. Jesse Clint Galganoff was born on February 8th, 1995, to parents Todd Galganoff and Elisa Clayman, and grew up in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He is of Jewish faith and was also known by his Jewish name, Chaim Yosef Ben Elisa. His parents divorced when he was younger, and Jesse lived with his mother, with whom he shared a very close bond, and he lived alongside his younger sister, Sammy. Though he resided in Canada, he did have dual citizenship in Canada and the United States. Jesse faced some difficult challenges growing up, but despite this, he always had a smile on his face and a positive outlook on life. He was described as having a huge heart and was known for being very empathetic and understanding. At high school, Jesse captained the football team. However, after suffering a serious concussion during a game when he was 17 years old, he was left suffering from post-concussion syndrome, meaning that he was left unable to function as he should. Because of this, he had to delay his application to college, but instead of being down about it, Jesse did something positive with his time. He decided to raise money and awareness for prostate cancer by participating in Movember, where men grow moustaches during the month of November in order to raise awareness about men's health issues, such as testicular cancer and mental illness. Over the course of five Movembers, Jesse and his friends managed to raise over $20,000, with Jesse making a number of humorous edited images of him with his moustache alongside inspirational quotes to help encourage people to donate to the cause. Jesse managed to eventually recover and applied to university in Connecticut in the US, where he achieved a bachelor's degree in mathematics. He wanted to further his studies and applied to medical school in Philadelphia, where he was subsequently offered a place. Galganoff hoped to one day work for Doctors Without Borders, which is a charity which provides humanitarian medical care. Aside from his education, Jesse loved the outdoors, hiking, participating in various adrenaline sports such as bungee jumping, skiing and the like, and learning about new cultures. He had taken numerous backpacking excursions and trips abroad during his time at college, and upon graduation, he was hungry for more. Before taking on this new challenging chapter of his life at medical school, the 22-year-old decided to take a gap year to travel, mainly backpacking through South America and Southeast Asia for approximately eight months. Prior to his departure to Peru, Jesse and his mother Elisa planned the trip day by day, mapping out where he would trek and where he would shelter for the night, also buying him all of the supplies he would need on his trip. The plan was to visit South America first, then end the excursion in Bangkok in Thailand, but within just a mere four days into Jesse's adventure, he vanished into thin air. Jesse departed from Montreal and flew to Lima, Peru on September 24th of 2017, where he stayed at the Loki Hostel for three days before embarking on an overnight eight-hour bus ride from Lima to Juarez, also in Peru. The bus arrived in its destination of Huaraf at approximately 6.12am on September 28th, with CCTV footage confirming his arrival. Galganov then made his way to Came House, which was a backpacker's hostel, arriving there at around 6.40am. According to reports, Jesse spent much of that day documenting his travels on social media and regularly messaging his friends and family, informing them that he had arrived at the hostel. 
Jesse also spent some of the day replenishing his supplies before staying at Kame House for a second night. Jesse told his mother that day via text that he was planning on taking a four-day trek along the Santa Cruz Trail and informed her that he would most likely not have any cell reception for the duration. He told his mother that he would be in touch when he got back around October 2nd, but unfortunately, Elisa never heard from her son again. Jesse left the hostel early the next morning and made his way to the Santa Cruz trailhead. The trail itself entailed an approximate 50 kilometer hike through the Cordillera Blanca Mountains in the north of Peru, with the rough terrain not for the faint of heart. Jesse did have some hiking experience under his belt and was well equipped to cope with the changing altitudes and conditions. This particular trail was one that Jesse had always wanted to take, so he was likely looking forward to the four-day excursion. But when October 2nd came and went, his loved ones started to become concerned when Jesse failed to contact them, as he had promised. His mother thought that perhaps her son had taken a longer route, and it would simply take him a few extra days to reach civilization again. But by October 7th, Jesse's mother got in touch with some of her son's friends and acquaintances on social media and through text to see if they had heard from him in recent days. Many responded, however the last known communication any of them had with Jesse had been through the Snapchat app on September 29th. At first, they weren't concerned that they hadn't heard from him due to the fact that he was hiking in the mountains of Peru and most likely couldn't contact anybody. However, days turned into weeks and concern continued to grow as radio silence from Jesse continued. By October 14th, Elisa filed a missing persons report for her son, firstly with US and Canadian authorities, then with the Peruvian authorities. Unfortunately, the only authorities that could assist in this case were the Peruvian, as the US and Canadian simply were not allowed to do anything to help. Elisa took it upon herself to spearhead the search efforts for her son, alongside family, friends and volunteers. Rather interestingly, when they started to retrace Jesse's movements in the days leading up to his last known contact, those at the Came Hostel where he stayed began to give alternate versions of events. Initially, those at the hostel, including staff, confirmed that Jesse had checked into the facility on September 28th. However, they later retracted this and stated that Jesse had never even been there, something which was very peculiar and suspicious. Due to these new revelations coming to light, Peruvian police opened an investigation into a possible abduction. Something else to note is that it was common practice for those hiking the Santa Cruz Trail to write their names down in a logbook prior to their departure so that a record could be kept of all of those who tackled the terrain. However, it was alleged that absolutely nobody had signed the logbook on the day that Jesse disappeared. As it turned out, however, this was entirely untrue. However, the logbook had been quote-unquote tampered with. To what extent, or as to what discrepancies were uncovered, is unknown. It was also alleged that the park administration team and the mule drivers along the trail, who used donkeys to carry supplies to and from the camps, were uncooperative with authorities when questioned about Jesse's disappearance. Many believe that this is not suspicious, however, due to the fact that the mountain community was very small and close-knit, and if a body were to be found within their jurisdiction, they wouldn't want the finger to be pointed at them. It was this reason alone as to why they were wary about talking to the authorities. Police, the Magnus International Search and Rescue Team from Israel, along with Elisa herself, searched tirelessly along the Santa Cruz Trail for any sign of 22-year-old Jesse. 
However, they came back empty-handed. They conducted land searches, used drones, and carried out underwater searches, but unfortunately, to no avail. It then came to light that a number of people had seen Jesse during his hike across the mountainous Santa Cruz Trail. Witnesses saw him arrive at the Tualipampa camp late on September 30th, where he reportedly camped alongside two French hikers, who told these witnesses that Jesse told them he had arrived later than expected because he had gotten lost. The two French men who were located by Magnus also claimed that Jesse had voiced his annoyance at feeling rather under the weather, experiencing headaches and bouts of diarrhoea, though it may have been altitude sickness. Jesse ate breakfast with the French hikers before heading out along the trail once again the following morning, though after a good night's rest he seemed to be in much better spirits. Over 200 hikers who travelled along the trail that day were identified and many were interviewed. However, other than the aforementioned witness accounts, nobody else had seen Jesse. The last confirmed sighting of Jesse Galganoff was on October 1st, 2017, at approximately 3.30pm, when he was spotted asking a group of Czech hikers for some water near to Punta Union Pass. He never used his return bus ticket on October 2nd and failed to board his scheduled flight to Bolivia on October 5th. Searches continued for Jesse, but no trace of him has ever been found. His parents have gone out to Peru a number of times to look for him, but unfortunately to no avail. They continue to press for answers across social media with the hope that someday they will be reunited with their lost son. Jesse simply disappeared without a trace, leaving no clues behind as to what fate ultimately befell him. Many believe that somehow he became lost in the mountains, fell unwell from altitude sickness and succumbed to the elements. However, a body has never been found, nor has any of the belongings he took with him. Is it possible he fell into a crevice, or possibly a body of water? If so, however, his remains haven't been found. Some believe that Jesse may have fallen victim to foul play of some sort. However, once again, there is no evidence to indicate that this is the case. Ultimately, we don't know what happened to Jesse following his hike in Peru, but his family are still holding on to the hope that he is out there somewhere. When he disappeared in September 2017, Jesse Galganov was 22 years old. He is described as being Caucasian, standing at 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighing 170 pounds. He had curly, short brown hair with a short, close-kept brown beard and light brown eyes. Jesse was last seen wearing black clothing and a Gregory Paragon 58-pack Omega Blue hiking backpack, which displayed a patch of the Canadian flag on the upper left side. His backpack weighed approximately 24 pounds and was believed to have been containing the following items. A pair of hiking shoes, a one-man tent, a camping mattress, a small portable stove, eating utensils, some unspecified clothing, a head torch, unspecified medication, an Amazon Kindle tablet and a journal. Two fundraisers have been created by Jessie's mother, one named Help Us Find Jessie, where she is trying to raise funds to help aid in the search for her son and help us take legal action to find Jessie, where she wants to prosecute those responsible for her son's disappearance. Elisa travels to Peru on a regular basis when she can to search for Jessie. On the GoFundMe campaign, she writes, quote, Sadly, I still have no hard evidence indicating the fate of my beloved son, but we have definite suspicions that must be further explored. I am not giving up and will never give up. I must bring Jesse home to rest, no matter the circumstance. 
In an article published in the Montreal Gazette, Jesse's sister, Sammy, spoke of him. Quote, Jesse will always be such an inspiration to me, and I feel forever fortunate to call him my brother. There is currently a 500,000 US dollar reward, which was raised by Jesse's father, Todd, for anyone with any information that could help locate Jesse Galganov, who, if alive today, would be 28 years old.